Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am sharing with you my week's 29 and 30 pregnancy update. I can't believe now we are officially in the 30s. I feel like from now until the end, all the weeks sort of blur together. It all goes by really, really quickly. So I'm trying to savor up every moment that I can, even though these past few weeks, and I know looking into the future, it's gonna be, it's gonna get harder and harder. I'm also keeping an eye on my toddler. <laughs> If you're brand new, I have a two and a half year old toddler and I just put him down for a nap. And so I'm keeping an eye on the baby monitor. Speaking of babies, let's chat about baby number two. Let's start with week 29, which now seems like a lifetime ago. So I wrote pulling and tearing feeling in my abdominals. So the biggest, I guess the biggest change over the past two weeks has been just my belly is growing so much and I've noticed that it's gotten a whole lot bigger in the past two weeks and that in turn has put a lot of stress and a lot of pulling on my abs. Your abdominals separate naturally during pregnancy and that's what causes a diastasis and depending on how like with your body and genetics and exercises you can do postpartum, you're able to kind of close off that diastasis. And something you can do during pregnancy to make sure that you don't have a bad diastasis afterward is make sure you're not constantly bending over. Well, I really need to take my own advice because I have found myself, and it's, some of it's inevitable, right? Like life at home with a toddler, you're gonna have to bend over to pick up toys and pick up your toddler and pick up bits on the foot. Like, there's a lot of bending over. <laughs> so I've just been mindful, especially in the past two weeks of how often I'm doing that and trying to take breaks. And if I can, trying to bend to my side or not bending over from my spine and just trying to like bend over from my hips. It's really tough, it's really tough, but I've been trying to do that because I've been experiencing a lot of pain and a lot of pulling from my abdominals up here. So I find that the less I bend over to pick up things, again, it's inevitable I have to do it, but the less I do it, the less pain I feel. Um, I wrote gut thyroid blood work done in week 29. So I went back um, to the lab to get more blood work done for my thyroid. Still haven't heard back from my endocrinologist, but I was able to preview the results online. <laughs> I'm not a doctor, but I think from what I saw and from what I gathered, everything is okay. And like, I'm still within that normal range. So I'll wait to get the official word from him, but I think that that's all good. And then week 29, we go into week 30. 30 and I wrote just feel big and heavy and that's just like that's just the truth right that's just the honest open truth I just feel really big and really heavy baby is gaining I saw on my app baby is now gaining half a pound a week half a pound a week when I turned 30 weeks I believe my app said that baby was now three and a half pounds so now it's just like all about putting on that baby weight and making sure that he has all those good healthy fats and I just feel it, especially by the end of the day. Something that I have noticed is not happening this pregnancy that happened with Hugo is I'm not swelling as bad. And I think it's because I'm not quite on my feet as much. With Hugo, I was teaching dance and Pilates and just like was out running errands and like it was pre-COVID. So like everything was fine. And so by the end of the day, if you guys remember, if you were here, my feet and my ankles were huge, huge. Granted, like we still have time, we can still get there, but I haven't been experiencing as bad of swelling this go around. Speaking of teaching dance and running around, I started teaching dance last week. We went back to school and I was nervous. I mean, besides like everything happening in the world and all of that, I was just nervous on how my body was going to react and how I was gonna handle it. And it went really, really well. Um, it, it went as well as it could have. I think it'll be really good for my body. I think then, you know, the next day when I woke up, I, it just felt better, I felt really good. And it was interesting because it's different from, it was a different feeling from when I had just, you know, the days that I go for a walk or do like a very light sort of movement at home. It felt, it felt better. So that's great. I wrote, started organizing baby stuff and like furniture and stuff. So if you haven't been keeping up with my weekly vlogs 
and some of the like bonus vlogs that I've been posting, um, then you may not know, but we finally figured out where all the baby stuff is gonna go. So the baby will be in our bedroom for the first, I'm guessing, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if the baby ended up in our room for the first year, but for right now, like bassinet will be in our room and then we'll figure out where the crib's gonna go when we have to do that bassinet to crib transition. But what we did was we got two, so we have the Ikea Hemnes eight draw dresser. We got the matching three draw nightstands in the same Hemnes line. And then we got another Ikea vertical dresser. And I'm about, I want to say like 80% done with transferring all our stuff out of the Hemnes dresser into the nightstands and the tall chest and then moving all the baby stuff into the Hemnes dresser. So I'm gonna make a separate video talking about how I organize the Ikea Hemnes dresser because I think it is the absolute perfect, perfect newborn baby dresser. I just love the way that it's set up. I love the way that we set it up for Hugo and the way we still use it for him. And it's exactly the same way I'm gonna use it for this new baby. So I'm actually about halfway done doing all of the baby laundry. And so I'm putting all of that away. And once all of that's away, then I'll talk you guys through the dresser and, and what we're doing and how we're organizing all of that. Because really like for us, that's all we've needed. Like it would be so nice obviously to have a separate bedroom for the baby and all the baby things could go in there but we just don't have this space and especially for i do intend to breastfeed so having the baby close by is pretty crucial for us and so having the baby in the same bedroom having that hemness dresser having all the baby things like it just if it works as well as it did with hugo then that'll be fabulous so that's been the past I guess the past week or so and just kind of finishing that stuff up i wrote started buying all the baby things so this is really exciting <laughs> i just love buying all the baby things so we've come to the we've come to the mark now so tomorrow i'm filming this on a tuesday tomorrow's wednesday it'll be eight weeks until baby's here so that's two months which will fly by i am so fully aware so what i've started doing is we've had a short list of the things that we need for baby and the things that we want for baby and so i've started ordering that stuff <laughs> we're about to get like a whole lot of target packages in the mail i will share all of those products and things in a separate video so keep your eyes out for that because that'll be a lot of fun but there are definitely things that we and i sort of mentioned this in my like what's on my registry video but there are definitely things that we did not have with hugo that we for sure wanted with the second one. So I ordered those, they should be coming soon and that'll just be exciting too. Those are like sort of the bigger, more functional pieces and that will put in our bedroom and put in the baby's space. And then I guess like once all that stuff comes, like we'll be, we'll be good. I have not rented the snoo yet. That is still on my list of to-dos. Um, the only things that I still need to do are rent the snoo, buy the little like snoo package, like the little baby swaddles and the sheets. And then, oh, there was one other thing. Oh, I'm still like debating on the Mama Roo. A lot of you, like, I've had such mixed some people are like, it didn't work for my baby. Some people swear by the Mama Roo. Just all things that I still need to think about. But those are sort of like the two big, bigger purchases that we still need to make. Um, but I can wait a few more weeks on that. So that has been, I believe, let me check my notes. Um, yeah, that's pretty much been the past two weeks. It's been just a lot of cleaning, a lot of organizing, a lot of putting things away, a lot of just feeling big and pregnant, just big and pregnant. I've had a lot of people, especially in the past week, ask me like, when are you due? What is it? And like talk to me about my pregnancy, which I didn't experience up until this past week. I think up until this past week, I still sort of looked like you couldn't really tell, not that you couldn't tell, but like I wasn't so big that it wasn't obvious and people you know obvious and for good reason like people didn't want to accidentally offend me if i wasn't pregnant so it's just in this past week that i've had a lot of strangers like when i take you go to the playground or to the farm um people 
just ask like oh when are you due and, and comment on the pregnancy so that's been fun I've, I've quite enjoyed that so let's do a little belly shot and i'll show you this big belly that i keep talking about this is all the laundry in the background that i was talking about <laughs> all the baby stuff this is my 30 week belly you can see the line here got a little bit darker i still haven't seen much of a line up here uh, but my belly button is definitely out for the world to see and that's from the side my big granny panties sticking out of my pajama pants <laughs> and from the other side you can see like he's not sitting he's not sitting super low but he's sitting low enough that i definitely feel like a weight down here which by the end of the day tends to feel heavy but yeah that's my 30 week belly Okay guys, and that's it for the update. Next week I have a doctor's appointment and I'm going to ask about the belly wrap. So a huge thing that has been recommended to me for postpartum C-section recovery has been a binder, like some sort of belly wrap. And some of you have said that your hospitals give you a wrap. Some people have said that they haven't. So I'm just gonna clarify whether or not I need to purchase one. And then I wanted to also ask, a few of you have asked me on Instagram, what happens if I go into labor early? And I have assumed that I would still be on the list for a C-section. And even if I did go into labor early, like that they would get me in quickly and we'd still be able to go the C-section route, but I don't know. So that's actually a really great question. I'm going to ask the midwife when I see her what the plan would be in case that happened because you know you never never know and my c-section is scheduled for 38 weeks and six days that's the day that i my water broke with hugo so it wouldn't be it's not a ridiculous question it's not because if the same thing happened this time it would mean that the day of my c-section my water would break right so Actually, that's like something really, that's a really good point and I'm gonna bring that up to my midwife because I don't, I don't know what would happen. I assume I'd still have a C-section, but I don't know, I don't know. All right, I will update you guys in the next pregnancy vlog. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you soon. Bye guys.